It is March the 15th, 2021, 2021. Wow, already halfway through March. How is that possible? Time is just skyrocketing by. Um, but I hope you're loving every minute of it. Hi. Uh, my name is Lee Chase. I am the Adult Program Coordinator for Literacy Mid-South, a nonprofit organization in Memphis, Tennessee. We focus on providing one-on-one -on -one tutoring for adults, so 18 and over, who need assistance with reading or are looking to improve their health. If you or anyone you know needs these services, there's some information on the screen, and I will provide it again at the end of the lesson of how you can get more information about those services, if you need those services. So, yeah, uh, look out for that. All right, and let's jump right on into today's episode of Literacy Lunch with, let's see, Lee, Literacy Lunch with Lee. So Literacy Lunch with Lee is an English lesson. I am here every Monday and Wednesday, noon Central Standard Time, right here on the Facebook page. It is broadcasted live. And for some reason, you jump in late, you missed part of the lesson, you missed the whole lesson. Uh, all of these videos are shared, or shared, archived in the videos section on the Literacy Mid South page. You can always go back, see what you missed, or you can go back and re watch their. Lots of great opportunities for practice, practice with vocabulary, beneficial if, whether or not you are working on learning or improving English, or even if I, th I think if you are working on reading, these lessons can be very helpful for you because you can see the vocabulary written and you can hear it pronounced, so you can hear pronunciation. If you're not in the Memphis area, please leave me a comment. Let me know where you are watching from. I would love to know where you are watching from. If you have any ideas, please let me know those. Let me know what would be most helpful to you. Let me know what would be most helpful to you. I am here to help you, so let me know how to do that. Please let me know how I can best do that for you. Um, and please remember to like and share. Let's get these out to as many people as we can who need them. So please like and share these videos. All right, so let's jump back in. Uh, we uh, are going to continue. The past two weeks, we have been working on homophones, on homophones. So we are going to stick with that this week as well because there are so many homophones in the English language. Uh, homophones, if you are not familiar with them, they are words that are pronounced exactly the same way, but they are spelled differently and they mean something completely different. So, you may hear the word, think you know what it means, but oh my god, pronounced the same way, it means something different. It's There are tons of those in English, so we're going to go over some more of those. So let's go ahead and jump right on in to this week's homophones. First up is hair. So hair and hair. So say that with me. Hair. You got that H, that hair. Hair. So of course hair in this case is the hair on your head, of which you can see I have very little, but um, hair, so the hair on your head, or Hair, this spelling of hair, is a type of rabbit. Yeah, rabbit is called a hair. That could be another another term. So you have hair and hair. So hair on the head, 
hair like the rabbit. They are very fast. Fast animal. That is the, oops, the differences in spellings on hair. Next one we got is him and him. So him and him. So say that with me. Him. Him. So yes, him and him, of course, is pronoun. So talking about a man, a him. Like you might say, uh, yes, I talk to him. Or, oh, look, it's him. Yep, it is uh, to describe a, a man. So him. Are he and him. So him. And then him. Is also a, a uh, hymn is also a church song, a song that you would sing at church is a hymn. It's a hymn. It uh, in the pew at church. You pull them out. You sing them during the church service. A hymn with this spelling. Hymn. Uh, kind of a tricky spelling since that n is silent. Yes, it is just pronounced him. Him. So him and him. All right, next up, hour and hour, hour and hour. So hour, so you do not pronounce the H, it is just pronounced hour. So say that with me, hour. So of course is a measurement of time. It is a 60 minute time. So 60 minutes equals one hour, so 60 minutes equals one hour, one hour. So, and then hour here is ownership, ownership of something. So hour, but it's, you know, if it's more than one person, a group of people, uh, it could be two, well, two or more, really, two or more people, uh, that we would say, like, I work at South, so for everybody who works here, this is our office, this is our office. So yeah, anything you're sharing, I live with my cat, so I guess that is our house, our house. At least he would tell you it is as much his house as it is mine, probably more his house than it is mine. But yes, our is ownership, so our, we have an H to indicate our as in the length of time. All right, next, in, in, so in, in, and ah, in describes, like you see the picture here, something is going to go in the box, so in is short for in, so I could say that I am in this room, right, I am in this room, I have keys in my pocket, in my pocket. So it means that they are inside. So inside. And then the other spelling here, in, in is another word for a hotel. It's another word for a hotel. So if you are going to stay at a hotel, it could also be an in, an in. So think about some of the uh, chains that use the name like Holiday Inn, Quality Inn. Yes, those are comfort in. Those are all inns. Those are hotels. So in is just another word for hotel. So you have in as in inside, and then in as in a hotel. <clears throat> all right, next up we have night and night. So night and night. So, of course, this night, the only difference in your there is a K at the beginning of this spelling, a K, oops, a K on the front. So K, so this night, this night, of course, is like the medieval knight. You see, he's got his armor on, he's got his sword, so it's like a medieval knight. 
Uh, night, of course, night spelled like this. Night is when it gets dark outside. When it gets dark, it is night. It is the late part of the day when it gets dark, that is night. So we have night, as in the medieval warrior. Night, as in it is dark outside, it's late in the day. Time to go to sleep. All right, next one, we have not and And similarly, of course, tonight, uh, we have a K at the beginning of one that is silent. You do not actually pronounce the K. So not and of course, not is when you tie a knot in a, in a rope, into a rope, that is a knot. That is called a knot tie it in, that is a knot. And this knot is another word for no. It's another way of saying, ooh, excuse me. It's another way of saying no. So, like, do not enter. Do not enter. That means no, you're not supposed to come in. So, not. So, if somebody tells you, do not do that, that means no, no. So, not is another form of no. So you have not, as in what you tie into rope or string, and then not meaning no. All right, so if I can get my hands on it here. Woo. All right, here we go. We have morning and morning. So morning and morning. So say that with me. Morning, morning. So morning, as in the time of the day, as the first part of the day, when the sun is coming up, is coming up, that is the first part of the day is the morning. Yes, the early part of the day is the morning. Uh, morning, when you spell with a U, morning, uh, means that you are sad, you are sad. It's another could be another word for you are grieving something, you are sad about something, then you are you are mourning. It happens only with the loss of a loved one, like when you have a death in the family or death of somebody you were close to, then you are going to be in grief, you will be mourning. You are mourning. So it means that you are you are very sad. You are sad if you are so morning, as in the first part of the day, some people <laughs> are mourning that it is morning because <laughs> they do not want to get out of bed. Um, so morning, as in the early part of the day, and then morning, as in you are. You are. All right, next one, plain and plain. So plain. So you got two different spellings here. Pronounce that with me. Plain. Plain. So plain and plain. So plain, I've got two pictures here for plain because this spelling of plain can mean plain as in this is a plain can be it's just solid, simple color. Um, it is very plain, meaning there's no design to it. There, it's just plain. Or a plain can also be like a field or a meadow, you'll see, can also be described as a plain. So that it can also be described as a plain. And then, of course, this spelling of plain is just short for airplane. So this is a plain. Plain would be like an airplane, an airplane. So that is a short way to say it, is just to call it a plain. So you have plain as in a plain color or plain as far as like a field or a meadow or plain as in an airplane. We have poor and poor. So poor and poor. So poor. Say that with me. Poor. Poor. So your O's are going to kind of ooh, ooh, ooh. Poor. And I guess it's sound that the O you would make. So 
poor here, of course, poor means you don't have you may be considered poor meanings, but that is what that is the context that we give it most commonly is if you're poor, if you don't have any money, you are broke. You are poor. And then poor in this case, poor is when you uh, when you uh, pour a liquid into a glass, when you put liquid into like a glass, so you're putting water in this cup, that is a pour. So you are pouring water into a cup. You are pouring water into a cup. So pour, as in not having any money, pour, you are putting liquid into a glass or a container. That is a pour. All right, our, ooh, okay, I didn't realize we were down to the last one. One more for today. Um, we have pray and pray. So pray and pray. One only difference here is we have a different vowel, an A here and E here, but we pronounce the same way. It's pronounced pray, so say that, pray. So we have pray as um, in church or well, at home, anywhere, if you are talking to God, then you are going to pray. You are going to pray. So you, you, you pray to God. You pray to other things, but I guess most commonly it is used religiously as if you pray to God. And then pray here is when, so the bear would be the predator or the hunter, and the is the is what is being hunted. Hunted. So for the bear, it was the fish. For the lion, it could be the gazelle. Uh, so the prey is what is being hunted. In other words, uh, your dinner, if you are the prey. So you are praying to to God or to a higher power. And then prey, you are be, you are the, what is being hunted. Yes, that is the prey. So you have the spelling pray and pray. All right, well, that is it for today. We'll be back Wednesday uh, with more homophones, more homophones. So please be sure to join us as we will get into some more of these. I think the, these will be very helpful because it's good to see the different, to know that there are different spellings and different meanings to these words. Even though you may be familiar with one meaning, there could be at least one more uh, way to spell these words and a different meaning altogether. So. All right, well, thank you for joining me today. Please leave me a comment. Let me know where you are watching from. If you have any ideas for lessons, please let me know that. Help you. And please, please, please remember to like and share these videos. Let's get these out to as many people as we can who may need them. And if you are looking for assistance with reading or would like to learn or improve your English, or you know somebody who might benefit from these services. You can get more information at our website at www.literacymidsouth.org, or you can call or text, call or text 901-327-6000, 901-327-6000. All right, well, that is it for today's episode of Literacy Lunch with Lee. I hope everybody has a wonderful Monday. Day. All right, everybody. See you there.